season finale, what they have in store. Always something with Empire. Let's get to it. And I'm like, come on, fruit cook, yeah. I want to put my soapbox, that's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for season four, episode 18, which is the finale of this season for Empire. We start right off where we left off. Eddie and old Giselle standing up there in the lion's den talking shit. Putting on this threat for Lucius and all of this. I was wondering how long it was going to take before Lucius got up in his face. He got up over there, baby, and was getting ready to give him old uh, steak knife to the neck, honey. And Eddie, it's like, you think I came here without a gun? So he told him, if I took Shine out after 30 years of friendship, what do you think I'll do to you, Eddie? And Eddie's going on and on and <clears throat> this, that, and the other. And as he's talking, then Lucius said, so that's what it is. You jealous. And he's like, I helped you build. If it wasn't for me, there wouldn't be any empire. He says, so, you know, we started things off doing things together, and then I got better. And I got to be a better businessman than you. And then I went further than you, and your shit folded. And you're jealous. So this is why you're doing all of this. He's like, oh, that's interesting. So he goes into this whole thing. He's like, if you don't. Do what I tell you to do. I'm going to turn this scarf over. And Koki said, so you a snitch, bitch. And he said, and then he said, see, I presented you with a deal, but you didn't want the deal. So what you're going to do is once your shares go in, and you get your shares back from the deal, when the Patels buy Empire, you're going to give those to me too. Or I'm just going to turn you over and you're going to jail. Because I got lawyers ready to go down with all of your shady dealings over the years. I said, oh, he's terrible. Next thing you know, Cookie then got mad. She said, get the fuck on up out of my house, Eddie. And take this bitch with you. Y'all get on out of here. And told her, and you should have pulled the trigger, bitch. I said, you know, I have to agree. I don't understand all of this. It's been a lot of this lately on television. It's pulling guns on people and not using them. I was always told that if you pull a gun, you better use it. You don't almost kill a person or pull a gun and threaten a person. No, you shoot their ass. If you pull a gun, you need to be ready to use it. All that threatening people with guns, that's some old bullshit. That is total bullshit. Whatever. They put his ass out and talk shit to his gun and all. Get the fuck out. I said, okay. So next we see Cookie go sit down with Anika. So Cookie goes to try to kind of offer Anika. You know, she said, girl, I could set you up where don't you want something in your own family instead of working underneath these men? She said, because Eddie ain't going to do it, but use you up and then throw your ass away. I don't know. I'm not afraid of you and your family anymore. I'm going to be the CEO of the company. She says, is that what he told you, bitch? Girl plays. He's going to throw your ass in the trash. She's like, I'm not doing it. This is my time. I said, well, nigga, bitch. So, Cookie's like, all right. She let her live. Let her go. I said, mm. Next thing you know, we actually got Tori. Tori and Jamal are talking. Tori keeps saying about how she really wants to just disappear. She just does not want to be in the limelight. After the concert and all of that, you know, the tabloids have actually taken the members of Anonymous, and they're all like, rolling and they all got gigs and this that and the other but she just does not want that she really liked the just just being out there making music and nobody knows who she is she's not good with the spotlight there goes why she's been getting high jabal told her i understand you know sometimes i feel that way but you know not very often but sometimes i feel that way she's like well you're gonna always be jamal lion that's just the way it is 
Later on, he was supposed to meet her at Leviticus. He finds this whore stretched out on the floor. She didn't OD. Ends up back in the goddamn hospital. I said, damn you, Tori. And further on in the program, her ass ends up dying. She had a grandma seizure and died. I said, Lord have mercy. A mess. A mess. So you know that screwed Jamal all up. Anyway, flipping back to the family. Lucius meets up with Cookie's mother. And Cookie's mother got it for Lucius, baby. She just ain't happy. And she just looked at him, rolling her eyes, carried on. They have a little exchange. And he tells her, you know, Cookie's just like you. Cookie told me you would be kind of tough. And she says, that's right, because I'm her mother. He said, yeah. But for a long time in our lives, you really weren't her mother, were you? I said, oh, girl, that read you, Annie. And she was giving him, honey, don't play with me, Annie. And he told her, she said, you know, you, you know, the whole 17 years and all of that. She's harboring all of this resentment toward him. And he told her, he says, listen, I love her with all my heart. She said, mm, pretty words from a pretty man. Honey. And I walked on off. I said, oh, boy, see, there's going to be some tension with them two. So that was that. So, okay. So then there's this whole thing going back and forth. They're trying to figure out some type of way to, to maneuver with Eddie. And nothing's coming up. So Lucius is like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to turn myself in. It is what it is. I'm going to turn myself in. Cookie, you going to take over. He pulls Andre, tells Andre, you are going to take care of your mother and this business and keep this business running. She did 17. I'm going to do what I need to do. You need to take care of your mother. Told him, you are the one that is the most like me. And you know, that was all Andre ever wanted to hear. That's all he ever wanted to hear. He wanted to be validated by his father. And he told him that he loved him and that he better take care of his mother and make sure that there's a lion at the head of that company. He told him he promised he would take care of it. I said, oh boy, okay. So um, that was that. Cookie wasn't feeling that. And then I kept thinking to myself, if you take all the lions out of Empire, then the business is not going to be what the business was because they are the business. You know, Lucius working with the people is what gets the stuff. Cookie working with them is what gets the stuff. The whole shebang of Empire is the actual lions make. They are the talent behind all of the other stuff. So I was thinking, why don't they just rebuild? Well, that's what Cookie was thinking. Naturally, me and Cookie would be on the same page. So she told him, we'll just rebuild this shit from the ground up. Well, you know, Lucius wasn't feeling that. Anyway, they had this big old meeting, and they go in, the Patels present their offer to the board, and then the Lions come in, and they present their offer to the board. And the board looks, and baby, the offer that they were supposed to make a $750,000, $750 million offer to the lion to the patel 700 million dollar offer and baby cookie took a regular old piece of paper and wrote a big old zero on it honey and gave him you can have it we don't even care honey we don't care nothing about it you can have it and you know what it all made sense to me because fuck them fuck them and that board them that board actually has it out for the lions anyway so why do you want to even continue bother fuck them let them have that shit and going, that was where my my attitude was. Well, Lucius was pissed. He was pissed off, told Cookie, you didn't have no right to do that, this, that thing, the other, whatever. She gave him whatever. It is what it is. I did it. Now let's move on. Next thing you know, he goes and presents her a ring and asks her to marry him again. It's like, okay, cool. No problem. And then they whisked on off and eloped and got married. I said, okay, cool. So that's that. Now, there's this press conference. Now, this is the best shit. This is the best shit all season. <laughs> this is the best shit all season. They go and have this press conference. You see that fucking crazy-ass Andre in there. He will roll up on Anika. 
and said to her, you know, she was like looking at, do I need to call security? Because you know, she's scared as hell of Andre. Because she know Andre owes her a fuck up, honey. He not just an ass whooping. He owes her a fuck up. You killed my wife, you bitch, and you gotta go. And he is always he's like, I want to kill her. I want that bitch dead. That's just been his whole thing. So she's sitting there, and he told her something about a, a guilty conscience, and she looking. He said, oh, it's just enough. He said, it's just too much bad blood. It's just too tiresome. He's like, you know what? Truce. He goes and gets two glasses of champagne, gives that bitch a glass of champagne. I said, bitch, I don't know why you drank that shit, because you know Andre ain't right. I don't know why you drank that shit. Well, it took us two more commercial breaks before we got to it. See, because I know my people. I know these goddamn lions. I live for them. That motherfucker, the nigga got up there and got to chit-chatting with the people and taking questions. That bitch got just as woozy and drowsy. I said, girl, he got you, bitch. She's sitting over there, but she can't get it together. Giselle and Addie Barker standing behind her and that motherfucker Giselle was saying, can this hoe even pass a goddamn drug test? And this is going to be your CEO? I said, oh my God, she is ridiculous. <laughs> but that bitch was over there hallucinating. And I knew it. I said, you yeah, gave her something to make that bitch hallucinate. Then we see it actually show uh, like a uh, kind of like a confessional, but showing him crushing up his pills and putting them in that goddamn shit. Got her ass going. Baby, I have never been so goddamn happy to see Rhonda. Rhonda was all out the audience. Baby kept asking her questions. Honey, I think it was looking at her eyes was getting big. I said, bitch, she is coming for you, honey. Dead and all. Bitch was gorgeous. I said, look at Miss Rhonda, honey. I said, girl, death does you good, honey. Miss Rhonda was rolling through there. That bitch was cleaning the motherfucker down to the press conference with her dead ass. I said, yes, bitch, that motherfucking cremation number five got you looking good, bitch. She rolled up through there, got her. They said, well, um, Miss Calhoun needs a break. She just needs to get some air. They're like, okay. So she's walking off. She get over there. She over by the steps and shit. And now she having this whole bout with this motherfucking hallucinated, this hallucinated fucking dead ass Rhonda. Maybe they keep going, 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 going. And next thing we know, um, she look over at Audra and said, what did you do? What did you put in my trick? What did you do to me? He just look at her like, mm. I said, oh. <laughs> so her and Rhonda still going at it, honey. She's standing on the steps. Here come Rhonda walking up the steps. I said, get it, bitch. Bitch was clean as hell. Come up the steps. She's like, I'm going to go. So she gets off the steps and she moves back. Then she goes and she turns around. Now Rhonda's standing behind her. She turned to hurry up to try to go down the steps. But she's not at the steps anymore. She goes and she literally walks. Because the whole outside part is all glass. That bitch walked right through that motherfucking glass and fell down that whole shit and ended up laying on her back on all them champagne glasses. I said, dead motherfucking bitch. All you see was her laying on the step, laying on the table, baby, with her beautiful white dress on, with her feet Cocked ace deuce, had he looking up. Andre looking over the balcony at her. <laughs> Him and uh, Rhonda, like. And the bitch is bleeding out all over the table. I said, Goodbye, Anika, bitch. So long, whore. I loved it. Loved it. It was the fucking best. So we got that go on. Like I said, Cookie and uh, Lucius then got married. Jamal then took his ass to London. He's in London, just enjoying not being nobody. It's like nobody really knows him in London. You're right. Anyway, bullshit. Tiana then ran up on Hakeem and told him, I'm pregnant. I haven't got pregnant. I know it's yours. I ain't been with nobody but you. I'm so sick of her old hot pussy. She's pregnant. He, that fool, the little boy with the big shoes, got there to be happy. I said, oh. Anyway, last scene, we see him going to uh, pick up uh, Bella because now Nika's dead. So naturally, he gets full custody. See how everything works itself out? Bye, Nika, bitch. And um, he's, you know, Blake, him and Blake hang out all the time. Now, they made, they like the best of friends now. Child, they get ready to go get in the car. They're putting Bella in the car, turns around. It's Hakeem standing there and Tiana standing there. And I came and standing there, and then there's Blake, 
And Tiana's eyes got real big. She was like, I can't believe he has a gun. Child turned around. It is Blake's crazy ass racist daddy with a sawed off shotgun baby. And he's aiming basically at Hakeem. And they, child, he just got to shoot, baby. It was like three shots. So I don't know who all got them. But I guess Blake, Hakeem, and Tiana got a little taste, Teddy. I said, that's going to be a problem. It's going to be a real problem. But that was it. That's how it all ended out. So we will see you guys next season for season five. Y'all know I'll be right here, Johnny on the spot, to see what's going down with my peeps. But all right, y'all. I will see y'all later. Toodaloo. <laughs>